Hey guys, and uh, welcome to working with vectors. And in this video tutorial, we are going to discuss how to work with vectors using their components. So, I uh, got a little uh, XY coordinate system here, and let's get us a vector going on this. Let's get, let's use red. That'll be fun. So I'm going to start my vector at the origin and it's going to come out to right about here. So let's say this uh, red vector is vector A and it is, um, let's say it's 35 meters and that looks to me like it's about 45 degrees. So that's what we're going to go with. Now, before, whenever we were working with vectors, let's get another one up here too. Um, let's do green. And let's say vector B is pointing uh, straight down and vector B is, uh, let's say it's 30 meters. And straight down we know is 270 degrees. So before, if I asked you to find uh, A plus B, well, you'd have to redraw B, come over here and draw it at the head of A, draw the resultant vector, la la blue blah blah blah. Okay, no more. Unless the directions say to add the vectors graphically. Then you have to do that. But another way that you can do this, so that you can go about this, is using the vector's components. So, if you look at this, if you imagine starting at the tail and going to the head of A, okay? If you imagine running along the x-axis and then jumping up the y-axis. So then you come up right here. Well, those right there are the components. This is AX and this is a y. So you have an x component that tells you how far to run right or left or laterally and you have a y component that tells you how far to run up and down. So your components can be negative or positive because you imagine if you had to run to the left well your x is going to become negative. If you had to run down your y becomes positive. So in quadrant one the x and the y are both positive. Okay? So what we're going to do, if you look at this, this is a right triangle. Okay? Something that is so helpful in this section is so ka -ta -wa. In other words, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, we know this length of the vector. Okay, that was given to us. It's right here. It's 35 meters. So this length right here is 35 meters. Well, that's just the hypotenuse of that triangle. Well, we also know this angle inside here. This angle was given to us, and it is 45 degrees. Boom, right there. So if we wanted to find the x component, that component is the adjacent to this angle. Adjacent means it's right next to it. So adjacent, I know the hypotenuse, ba -boo. I'm going to use cosine. So your first step when solving these problems is to break the vector up into its components. So we have ax and bx, and we've also got a y, I'm going to bring it over here, ooh, that's bright, a y and b y. Now, a x, or the x component of your vector, is going to be the magnitude of that vector times the cosine of the angle. So this angle is theta. This is your magnitude. Bx works the same way except now you replace B 
and B's angle is right there. A Y, if we look at this, the Y component is the opposite of our angle that we know. Opposite hypotenuse. So your Y component is going to be A sine of theta. Your B Y is going to be B sine. Whoops. B, I'm thinking Y. I've got Y on the brain. Let's go ahead and get that cleared out of there. So by is b sine theta, and you know what? I put cosine or I put sine up here, and this should be cosine. Silly, silly, silly. So, or no, I did that right. I'm I'm just being backwards. I'm being silly. So our y components are sine. Our x components are cosine. Every single time it works this way. So, if we do this calculation, making sure our calculator is in degree mode, we would go 35 times the cosine of 45. That gives us 24. Let's go ahead and go 0.7 meters. To find Bx, I go 30 cosine of 270 and I get zero. Now, why did I get zero for B? If you look at vector B, it is going straight down. There is no lateral movement at all with vector B. So it makes sense that B's X component is zero. Now, to do uh, AY, we go 35 sine of 45. That gives us 24 0.7. Now over here, I'm going to go 30 sine of 270. That gives me negative 30. Now, this should make sense because the y component tells you how far to go down. Well, with vector b, we had no x component. All we did is we went straight down. We went down how far? 30 meters. That is why it is negative, because it is signifying going down. Think about it. Negative people have a frown. Negative means down when it comes to y. Okay? So, we're doing this operation, vector a plus vector b. That is going to give us some new vector, and it is going to be vector, let's just call it vector c for the alphabet's sake. Well, vector C can also be broken up into its components, Cx and Cy. Now, Cx is given by doing this operation, A plus B, but using Ax and Bx. So Cx is Ax plus Bx, which gives us 24.7 meters. CY is given to us as AY plus BY. Well, we go 24.7 minus 30, because it's 24.7 plus negative 30. So CY is negative 5.3 meters. Now, before you go any further, it's helpful to think about what quadrant this vector is in. So it's got a positive x and a negative y. If you drew an xy coordinate system, you would start going to the right because you have a positive x component, but then your negative y tells you to go down. So this would be your vector. That's going to help us later when we try and find the angle. Remember, we always want the angle above the x-axis. Now, let's, move, let's come back to vector c. We have the components of c, so now we have to, in, the, in a sense, work backwards. We have the components of c, we want to know the magnitude of c. So over here, if we imagine this triangle, the hypotenuse is the magnitude, or vector, or c. That's what we want. 
I know what CX is, and I know what CY is. This is a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. C equals the square root of CX squared plus CY squared. Now, little tip. If you are doing this, you are dealing with negative components, and your calculator gives you an invalid. That means that you have forgotten to square the negative, because your calculator cannot take the square root of a negative number. So when you're doing this, don't forget to square the negative. So negative 5.3 squared becomes positive. So if I put this into my calculator, 24.7 squared plus negative 5.3 squared, and I take the square root of that, I get C equals 25.26. Now, looking at my significant figures, I started with 2, 2, 2, 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this two significant figures. Let's go ahead and add a little decimal right there. So, two significant figures. So, my magnitude needs to become 25 meters. You don't want to lose little points because of your significant figures. Now, the next part, we have the magnitude, but vectors also need a direction. So, if we look at this, we're in the fourth quadrant. So, to find the direction, we use tangent inverse, and we are going to go CY divided by CX. Now, that is going to give us some angle. If we come over here, it's going to give us this tiny little baby angle right in here. I want the angle above the x-axis. So, when you are in the fourth quadrant, your angle is 360 minus theta, or whatever you get right here. This is theta. When you're in the third quadrant, it is 180 plus theta. When you're in the second quadrant, it's 180 minus theta. And when you're in the first quadrant, lucky you, it's just theta. So if we plug this in, tangent inverse of negative uh, 5.3 divided by 24.7, it gives us a negative angle. It gives us negative 12.11. We do not care about that negative. That angle is right in here. So we simply go 360 minus 12.11, and that gives us an angle of 347 degrees. If I were keeping significant figures, I would move that to 350 degrees. And this would be my final answer magnitude, and a direction. This angle should make sense because I'm in the fourth quadrant. I need to be between straight down is 270, straight right is 360. Hey, looky there, I am. So, that is uh, working with vectors using components. Main thing to remember, to find your x component, cosine, to find your y component, sine, okay? Um, that's all I have for using vectors componently. I hope you've enjoyed this and are studying and do well on your tests.